we, we've been talking a lot about grace and, 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 and a lot about uh, uh, what that means to us uh, in our walk with the Lord. Um, but you know, I got to think that I was just sitting on the deck the other day and I was just thinking about the goodness of God. I was just reading. It was a nice breeze out there. And um, uh, the Spirit of God said, uh, you got to, you know, even though you're going over these uh, new things, I, I want you to, you know, go back over some old things because we can't have things slipping. Amen? Amen. So um, today we're just going to be looking into uh, the components of restoration. The components of restoration, uh, restoration is real, and it's real with God, and it should be real with us. And uh, we know the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, that's his MO. Jesus said, don't get confused. I came to give you life in abundance to the full until it overflows. Amen? Yeah. Some Christians got confused. You know, they see stealing, killing, destruction. And they you feel like, oh, maybe God is in it to teach somebody a lesson. God is not in any of that. He distinctly told his disciples, what his ministry was all about. Yeah. Remember when the, uh, I believe it was uh, a certain city in Samaria, they didn't receive uh, Jesus. They would not receive him. Uh, this uh, racial divide, you know, has always been going on. <laughs> and, and the disciples said to Jesus, hey, you want us to call like they could? You want us to call fire down from heaven? And Jesus said, boys, it's not like that. The Son of Man has come not to destroy men's lives, but to save men's lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we see that that racial uh, prejudice that's that's been as long as uh, uh, mankind fell and took on the nature of the serpent. Amen? But it's God's will. That we live, amen, we live life in abundance to the full until it overflows, amen? amen. So Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2 uh, says, Therefore we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. And so I thought about uh, the precious work of the Holy Spirit. And um, I don't know about you, but uh, it says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, uh, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And uh, he's going to make you a witness. He's going to make you a witness. Uh, Jerusalem was their hometown. Uh, and then he says he's going to make you a witness in uh, Jerusalem. Um, Samaria, Judea, and then into the uttermost parts of the world. You quote that properly. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And so we understand that the Holy Spirit comes, uh, He's in us, in the inception of the new birth. Everyone has the Holy Spirit. I know in, in different circles of Christianity, um, we, they use the phrase in the book of Acts, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? That throws some people off because once you get born again, the indwelling of the Spirit of God comes into you. You do get the person of the Holy Spirit. Then there's uh, the second blessing or the baptism <clears throat> in the Holy Spirit, wherein the he who is in you, he comes up on you. Now remember, he's in you for strength, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, uh, temperance. Um, he's, he's in us in the nine fruits for your strength, but then he comes on you for warfare. He comes on you for the fight. 
Amen. And uh, in that, he gifts us with various gifts and divine impartations, which helps us to expand our witness in the earth. And so, uh, remember that the greatest gift of all is the person of the Holy Spirit. And the Word of God says he will lead you, he will guide you into all truth. And I know uh, some of you, I don't have to reiterate this, but you know, uh, and I know you do this, let's just talk to the Lord like you, you know, talk to your best friend. Amen? Amen. You know, I, I've had so many instances of talking to the Lord, but I think one of the most uh, I, I do all the time is, oh, where are my keys? <laughs> I'm talk, just so used to talking to him, you know, and it's like, okay, Lord, once you get, you, and you know what this is like, you get to praising God, you get to thanking God, and he takes you out of that frustration into peace, amen, and you find what you're looking for, or, or whatever it is, amen, but we have an ongoing conversation with the Spirit of Christ, He's good like that. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to show you. He wants to bless you. Amen. And he wants you to be separated. Amen. So we can glorify our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Abba, our wonderful Father. John 16, 13 to 15. How be it when the spirit of truth is come? He will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. So the Spirit of God, He shows us the Father. Amen. He shows us Jesus. He shows us the Word of the living God. Remember, uh, the Spirit of God is the author of the Word of God. Second Peter 1, 20 and 21, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we understand the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, He is the author of the Word of God. He is the author of the Word of God and we as the people of God should have a relationship with the Word of God. And you've heard me say this all the time. If you don't have a relationship with the Word of God, it's almost like you can't read. It's like being in the natural. You can't read. You can't write. You know? I don't see my driver's license. You can get around without driving license. But, but you are incapacitated. You know, and a lot of people who don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, especially an intellectual relationship with the Holy Spirit, you walk with him, you talk with him, he can correct you, he, he tells you uh, 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 his plan, his plans, and his purposes for your life. A lot of people can't prosper because they never get into purpose. In your purpose is your prosperity. Amen. You know, people hear prosperity so wrong, but you know, I, you know, I, you know, uh, once you experience certain things in the Word of God, you really shouldn't let people uh, critique your experience. Amen. Your experience with God, with the Holy Spirit, is greater than what anybody else says. Amen. 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 I'm talking about when it lines up with, with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. When it's true and it's sure. Amen. You don't have to uh, uh, worry about or or uh, uh, be concerned about what other people are saying. And you, you know, we gotta graduate. You 
You know, you can't be a people pleaser and you can't be worried about people. Now, I'm not talking about being obnoxious. You know the difference between, you, you know the difference between uh, having the peace of God and being apathetic? You know? Some people don't have the peace, they just apathetic about everything. I don't care. Well, you're going to hear soon. You keep that attitude. You, you want, you want, but I'm talking about the peace of God. You walk with God. You fill your heart with the word of God. You praise God. Amen. You begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go back to praying in the Holy Ghost. Remember those days you prayed? You know, we, for years we had 5 a.m. prayer here. Uh, 5 a.m. Amen. amen. And um, so I said, are, are we going back to that now? But, uh, <laughs> but you can at home. Amen. Uh, but uh, pray in the Holy Spirit. Use, you know, use your personal relationship with the Lord. Amen. To lift you and take you into the greater things of the Word of God. Jeremiah 15 and, and, and verse 16. Uh, uh, ask the Holy Spirit to give you an insatiable appetite. For the word. Amen. Hey, you know, uh, ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me to hunger and thirst for your word. Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I'm called by thy name, O Lord God. Of hope. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah said, he said, I, I begin to cultivate an a, a insatiable appetite for the things of God. And he says, it even got to the point where he wanted to quit. He told the Lord, Lord, you deceived me. I thought ministry was going to be totally different than it is now. Every time I prophesy accurately, I've ended up in jail. You know, I got a Gander Hill ministry, and I didn't plan that. And he told the Lord, I'm going to quit. But uh, his testimony was, the word was in him. Like fire shut up in his bones, and he couldn't hold his peace. Jeremiah said, I wanted to give up Canaan. I wanted to quit. I wanted to throw in the towel. And he, left. he said, uh, I, all those emotions were going through me, but I went to my next assignment. <laughs> all those emotions were, you know, the enemy was harassing me. Life was hard on me. He said, but I still kept going to my next assignment because his word was like fire shut up in my bones. See, that's what the Holy Spirit does. We have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He cultivates God's will on the inside of you. Purpose begins to come up in you. Amen. Destiny begins to come up in you. But, but more than that, joy unspeakable and the glory of God begins to move all through you. Amen. And you begin to delight to do the will of God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, keep on eating. Keep on eating. Glory to God. Amen. Get that insatiable appetite. Amen. For the word of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, he said, go back to praying in the Holy Ghost until you see results. Jude, verse 20. But ye beloved, build me up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now I want to share this with you. When you are praying in the Spirit, you give heaven consent to do what it wants to do. You tell heaven mysteries that I don't know anything about, but are for me, for my family, uh, for my children, for my grandchildren, for my nieces and nephews and cousins. You give God, when you pray in the Spirit, you give God consent. To do what he wants to do. And then when you get to praying in the Holy Ghost, the, the, the Word of God calls it a, a most holy faith. There, there's a greater faith 
that comes when you spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. When you continue to pray in the Holy Ghost, I believe your faith just begins to climb to a new level. And what you couldn't believe for yesterday, you can believe for today. What you couldn't step out and do yesterday, you can do today. Because now it's not you trying to do it. It's that most holy faith that's entwined with the mysteries of the Spirit. It's that most holy faith that comes when you yield to the Spirit of God. You decrease, He increases, He begins to rise big in you, and we know greater is He that is in us, greater than demons, greater than darkness, greater than sickness, greater than disease, greater than setbacks, greater than hiccups, greater is He that is in you and I, than he that is in the world. And most of us, when we first got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we prayed in tongues all the time. Now, it, 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 it's, I'm not labeling anybody, but I'm saying many times as time goes on, it's not as, uh, uh, it's not as consistent in its duration. You know, somebody had to go, hey, blah, 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 shut that most. You know, and that's good. But you know, let that, let that 30 seconds turn into 30 minutes, turn into, you know, to an hour. Amen. I mean, if you really want to see the fruit of what you have, you got to spend time in it. Amen. Amen. And uh, I know you've been lifted. I know you've been lifted as you spent time praying in the Holy Spirit. I know you've seen things turn around that would not normally have turned around, but you spent time praying with Almighty God who lives on the inside of it. It's the perfect prayer, people. It's the perfect prayer. Amen. You know, it's not you coming up with the prayer, what you think you need or you think you want. It's the Spirit of God praying through you. Acts 2 and 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they, then they begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They had a part. God had a part. They had to begin to speak. And when they spoke, God gave them the utterance. Amen? Amen? You know, that's many times when you're trying to get people baptized in the Holy Spirit, they're waiting for it. You know, they're just waiting for God to say everything. No, no, no. You, you, you got to do something. Amen? Open up your sanctified mouth. It might sound like gibberish. Amen? It might sound like geeky gaga. But you know, you know, we, we have babies, you know, and uh, you know, they don't articulate. You know, they can't articulate. I mean, you know, if your infant starts talking to you, you call the office. <laughs> they say, hey, man, he's like, you know, that's the way they speak. And that's the way it might sound. And sometimes we can't intellectually grasp that. Amen? But you leave that to God. You begin to say something and watch God get in. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they all begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen? Amen. So, so we said that uh, uh, it is imperative, you know, not to let these things slip. You know, some of you have been saved a long time, but you got, you got to go back to spending that time uh, in the Word of God. That's why we've been doing the plow. You know, Tuesday at 1, Wednesday at 6, Thursday at, at 1, Friday at 1. Amen? Uh, what are we trying to do? We're just trying to get everybody uh, into the practice of reading the Word. And I like what Pastor Elder said. He says, and hopefully that will take everyone into the, a greater studying of the Word of God and, and, and a greater meditation in the things of God. Now, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but, you know, it's great to read the Word. You need to read the Word, but you also need to meditate. So I like to do this. Uh, maybe I read uh, for half an hour, 45 minutes, but then I have one verse. That, that I'll take and I, I'll meditate that verse all month. You know? Have you finished reading? There? Because, because the Word of God says that it, it, meditation is one of the components to our success. 
You know, meditation helps to incorporate a image, uh, a, a godly image, a, a, a spirit of truth image, amen, an image that comes out of the kingdom of God into your life. So after you finish your reading, maybe you're meditating on 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bore my sins. My, my, my sin condition has been taken away. Now the devil tried to bring up condemnation any way he can. Scramble, hard boiled, over easy, outlet. The devil will try to harass your mind with condemnation because he is the accuser of the brethren. Amen. But as you meditate on the word of God, the image of being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Holy moly, God calls me his righteousness. I mean, you got to meditate on that to receive that. God says, you are my worship center. Amen. You are the righteousness of God. I put my spirit in you, and I call you my righteousness in the earth. And as you meditate on that, that scripture gets bigger and bigger. It's like the progression of the promises. There's the blade. There's the ear. And then there's the full corn on the ear. Something's going on on the inside of you. And one day you just know that you know you belong to God. He belongs to you. You are in Christ. Abba is your father. All things are passed away. All things have become new. And things get newer and newer and better and better because you are established in righteousness. Amen. And he is pleased. Amen. To treat you. Amen. As Christ in the earth. Amen. 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 That's what the spirit of grace says. It says, I am pleased to, to treat you just like you were Jesus. In the earth. You are blessed. You are highly favored. You will overcome. You will be restored. I restore your soul. I restore the years that the locust, the cankerworm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm have stolen from you. Amen. I am your glory and the lifter of your head. Glory be to God. Amen. And now, now let's look over here at the uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, because we have weapons, and we have supernatural weapons, amen? We have weapons that come out of the kingdom of God, out of the celestial kingdom of God. We have weapons, amen, that glorify God, amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Amen. It says in verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, amen, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, amen, what we fight with, they are not carnal. Amen. So you don't have to be sitting on your, your co-worker's car when they come out and make them listen to you. <laughs> And uh, use all kinds of strange language that would intimidate them. Amen. That's you know, <clears throat> you know, uh, you, you, you don't have to do that because you got another weapon. Right. Uh, now you know, I know uh, some of you forget that I know those fleshly weapons can work, but they don't have no profit. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you hear people say, "Well, uh, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm, 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 I'm gonna give you some street justice." I do understand that. But God says, you got a greater weapon. Amen? Now, 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 if you use that weapon, you're not going to get God's back. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Uh, amen with me. I said, if you use, if you use that weapon, God's not going to back it. So what he said, vengeance is mine. I'm going to repay. Amen? I'm going to repay. I'm going to take care of it. And, and can't nobody work it out like Jesus. Yes. It's just that. Amen. I used to love that song. Jesus can't work it out. Alright. They didn't sing that song. But they sing it like that. Amen. It's just that. 
So, so the weapons of our warfare, my whole point is the weapons, the weapons that we use, they are not earthly, they are not fleshly. They are of the kingdom of God. They are of the spirit. They are from the parent world. And they are greater than anything your flesh could ever conjure up. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So it says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God <clears throat> and then bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, uh, one of the reasons why it says that we got to cast down imaginations because your imagination is a very powerful tool. Yeah. You know, the people don't realize how it, it, how powerful the, the imagination is. And uh, unfortunately, it seems like uh, uh, many people on the whole use imagination more before they met Christ than afterwards. You know, you remember before you met Christ, you know, you, you imagine yourself doing things. And you did it. You know? Got bold with folk. Oh, got out the car, because you ain't no punk. Right? That thing, you imagine that thing, and you imagine yourself being very bold, sometimes even reckless, in dangerous situations. Because the imagination is very good. But the Word of God says, now, the, the reason why we have to cast down these imaginations is because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's why the word of God has to be incorporated because the word of God changes the image on the inside and you are what you see yourself. My kids are very um, uh, kind of like easy going. And uh, my daughter got mad one day. She said, uh, Dad, this boy Kit Kat in his shins. She said, I was going to go get him. I'm trying to hold my pizza. Ain't nobody kicked me. Where did he get that from? Somebody <laughs> kicked me when I picked up a cell. Yeah, I think it was. They ain't popping now. You know, you know, you, you know, you know. You don't always get everything after your parents, and you know, sometimes you get traits from uncles and aunt and, and you know things like that. So, but uh, so I, I try to tell them, you know, you you build up, you get the word. I tell my children, you build yourself up in the word, and you see yourself, amen, the way you should see yourself, amen. You don't you don't let people use. Uh, you know, various slangs or, 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 or various terms toward you, you know, uh, you don't let, uh, this is, uh, for instance, uh, you don't let Caucasian people call you the N-word, you know, well, why not, you know, I hear, I hear uh, 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 black people call it other black people that word, but, but you know, you, you have a higher standard than that, and if they do, you tell them, no, that's offensive. Now, if we're going to be friends, you're going to take that word out of your mouth. Yeah. Now, we don't have to be friends. Yeah. Amen? Because yeah. I see myself, amen, I see myself as a person, amen, that is not turned like that. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I'm better than that. Yeah. So, I don't use that even play. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So, uh, let's turn over here to Genesis 11. Genesis 11. We're still talking about the power of the imagination. And um, he said that the weapons of our warfare will purge us. The weapons of our warfare will purge the imagination from these strongholds that have been placed in our mind that motivate us and take us sometimes to places we don't need to be. Look at Genesis chapter 11 beginning with verse 1. And it says, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain 
in the land of Sinai. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime for the mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. Now, you know, this is the background for Babylon. At that time, everybody spoke one language. You need an interpreter. Everybody spoke the same language. Now, why? look at verse 5. It says, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men Build it. Now it wasn't done. It wasn't built. But what he saw was in their imagination. And he said, I got to come down here because they've imagined it. It is on one accord. They have established that thing. It is done. Right. Yes. Amen. I heard some people say, What's going on in your mind will happen in time. What's going on in your mind will happen in time. So it behooves us, amen, to have to have uh, the proper things going on in our mind. If you have the outline, you might see Genesis five, Genesis five fifteen, and uh, Abraham. Abraham, God told Abraham, look up in the sky. He says, and that's what your seed is going to look like. Now, you know, I don't know what's going on around this area, but I've been in other parts of the world, and at night, it seems like stars are on top of each other. You know? And, 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 and he tells Abraham, he says, look up there, they are your children. Look at the sand, that's all your generations. Why? Because he's giving him an image on the inside of him. Amen. This is even before he changes his name. He tells him, your seed is going to be like the stars of heaven and like the sand on the seashore. I tell you, let me get your an image together. <laughs> now, it says that uh, uh, Psalm, this is not Psalm, this is Proverbs 29, 18. It says, without a vision, the people perish. Meaning, without vision, people cast off their strength. Or without vision, uh, people are not disciplined. You know? Uh, uh, you know, uh, I know there's things in child rearing you have to make your children do. So they won't be lazy. And I just don't get my kids. You up, you out. You gonna do this. Why me? Because it's you. Amen. I'm good anymore. You know the this. I didn't hurt you, but you do it. <laughs> My son says, I didn't do that. I didn't hurt you. You don't want to do this so bad. But you did eat. So you wash it. <laughs> Sometimes I wait till you get good before. You wash it. You wash it now. And then I'll be all over. I just watch. Because we're not eating that on dirty dishes. You're not going to dip them in the water. And, and, and I'll play that. I'm not going over it. I'm going to watch you do it right. Pour the Clorox in. Yeah. What is it going to be? Clorox smell. You'll be, you'll be over. <laughs> this is the clean. Yeah. See, it says when there's no vision, people get lazy. Yeah. Yeah. You, know what, you don't want your son to be in your house at 40. Come on, hey, mom, what's for dinner? <laughs> Boy, you going to get up from here? <laughs> huh? That's real. Amen. That is wonderful to have your kids and run. I believe they should be at home. They should be comfortable with them as long as they want to. Until it's time for them to, you know. You know, you know we came from a generation 18, they push it. <laughs> our parents stayed on our back every which way till we back. He's he not even looking for some feedback. <laughs> you go on there. No? Well, uh, the word of God says, without vision, 
Amen. The people perish. Amen. But with vision, amen, comes a discipline. And, if, and then it says, and then it says, and then it says, um, uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 to 14, it says, write the vision down and, and make it plain. Amen. So not only you can see it, but everybody can see it. It says, because the vision is for an appointed time, but at the end, it will speak. Amen. And not tarry. And so, and, but though it tarry, you wait for it because there's a sequential order. There's an order in things being downloaded. Amen. In your spirit. And then your spirit begins to, to, to wrap that thing up and send it back up into your faculties. And there a whole new life is being built for you based and built on the word of God so that you can have the abundant life, amen, in, in abundance, uh, you can have life in abundance to the full until it overflows, amen? amen. Now Psalms 1 and 2, Psalms 1 and 2, and, 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 and Joshua 1 8 says uh, that meditation brings about good success, amen? Uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 10, we know that scripture, it talks about plowing in hope. Amen. So we read our Bibles, but we also meditate on the word of God. So this week, I want you to start this. I want you to read your Bible. Amen. Amen. If you can get on the plow, get on if you can't, that's all right. Read your Bible for at least a half an hour. And then take that one or two verses and meditate on them for, for 30 days. Amen? Because your meditation is building an image that you want on the inside of you and it's taking down. The weapons of your warfare are taking down those old images that the enemy helped you build. Amen? Amen. So, we understand that while we're doing this, the enemy's not going to just let you go. You know, haters are going to come. And what are haters for? Haters are coming, you know, to test your grace. Oh, yeah. You know, just like you got an assignment for God, those haters got an assignment from the devil. And they coming. You're not going to just do all this process and fly on. No, the enemy go, he see you in the word for three straight days and you meditating on this verse. He knows where that's going. This girl about to break out. What? So all of a sudden this conflict starts to come, but you got to be true to the process. Amen? Go and get a picture. The picture helps you to see where the promise is going. Amen? The picture is helping you to see where the promise is going. Amen? Amen. You believe in God? You believe in God? I mean, this is how far over time. Three minutes. Thirty minutes? Okay. All right. Um, Ten. You said it? Ten. I'm at forty minutes? Okay. All right. I'll close with this. Wait, get a picture. Say, so what does the picture do? The picture is going to show you the end result. Uh, Isaiah 46, 7 and 11. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are uh, not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executes my counsel from a far country, yes, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Put a picture up in the refrigerator. Put a picture wherever you know you gotta go. You gotta eat. You gotta go to the bathroom. Put the pictures where you have to go. Put them up. Put them up on the house, the car, the new job, where, wherever you're believing God. Put that picture up. And that's going to connect with the imagination that's going to connect itself with the promises of God 
that you're meditating on. Amen? And uh, when you get a chance this week, uh, Genesis chapter 30, 25 through 35, is the story of how God made Jacob rich. And you know, Jacob was a, he was a kind man. Mm -hmm. And uh, he kind of, he kind his own brother out of his birthright. But you know, there's always a better one than you. <laughs> and uh, he goes to Uncle Laban, woo, and does he get school? <laughs> and Uncle Laban, he tells him, yeah, 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 you can marry my daughter, but you got to work uh, seven years for her. And uh, uh, Jacob looks up, and he's been there, seeming life forever, and he's broke with all these children. And he tells Laban finally, he says, come on, man, do me right. I got to go. I got to go back home. And I got, I got these wives and I got these children with me. And, and, and I'm proud. And he falls on his face before God. And God tells him what to do. And he says, he tells Laban, okay, give me all the speckle and the spotted sheep and goats and cows. And you keep all the solid ones. And Laban is like, my dumb son-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Because they, they were rare. And it says that God told Jacob to cut out spots on the poplar wood as the animals came to the water trough to make. And as they would be mating, they would be seeing uh, this uh, speckled and spotted as they were mating at the water trough. And what happened is he began to, they began to reproduce, uh, Jacob began to reproduce cattle that were spotted and speckled and he left their ring. What's on your mind? Is going to take place in time. Yes. So let's start getting our pictures back out. Let's start putting them on the refrigerator. Put them up in the bathroom mirrors. Amen. And so you say in the closet, don't go all your clothes. You got those big old walk-in closets. Put them in the closet. Put those pictures wherever you go. Amen. It's been God reminding me of these things. You know, I used to say, get your pictures back out. I used to have pictures for everything. He said, get your pictures back out. Amen. And, and on purpose, go out, you know, I went out on the deck, you just got my deck redone, and it was so beautiful out there, the wind was blowing, and I just started reading before they had my cup of coffee. And uh, I just reading out there. He says, go, go back to those pleasant atmosphere you make on purpose. And just begin to glean my word. Put the pictures up. Go back to praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I used to drive a half hour this way and a half hour that way. I know we live for an hour. Then as you know, your spirit gets more greedier, you'll spend more time. And just praying in the Holy Ghost. Because the Spirit of God knows what you have need of. And he wants you to overcome more than what you desire to overcome. Amen. Because he made you. Amen. And he made you for himself. And his desire is that you have life in abundance to the full until the Lord falls. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God for all of you. You know, just trying to, to go back and and uh, build up some things. Let's at any time they have slipped. Amen. And uh, we are a people of purpose, power, praise, prosperity. We are a people who are blessed of the Lord, highly favored. Amen. Amen. And overcoming in all things. At this time, you just stand on your feet. Just want to get an invitation if there's anyone here. There are four invitations. One, you've never accepted Jesus Christ 
as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says, Behold, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Uh, if you felt like you, you drifted away from the Lord, and you desire to uh, just rededicate yourself, amen, you just want to openly and publicly rededicate yourself, amen, uh, we invite you to come to the altar and uh, just uh, in your own heart, in your own tent, amen, uh, just come back to the Lord and tell the Lord, I thank you, amen, that I am a son, I am a daughter, I am a child of the most high God. The third uh, invitation is, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and you want this extra that God has given his people, amen, and then the last one is uh, to be a part of this uh, great congregation. I've given you four invitations. Salvation, rededication, be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, or to be a part of this ministry. If you've been watching on our virtual ministry and you desire to give, you can go to our website, Spirit Life Ministries International dot org, or you can write us at 3401 Governor Prince Boulevard, Wilmington, Delaware, 19802. The Lord bless you. Happy Father's Day and continue to keep you safe.